It's time for another 100 mile real world mile per gallon test. And this time we are testing the 2025, yes, 2025 Subaru Outback Touring XT. So the XT means it has the 2.4 liter boxer turbo engine in it. So we got a little more horsepower, we got about 260 horsepower in this. And we're supposed to average 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, and an average of 25 miles per gallon. So 25 miles per gallon is what we're gonna be shooting for today. So let's take a quick look at this before we head to the gas station. All right, now there's no major changes for 2025. It's pretty much uh, the same as it was last year. Now this, like I said, this is the XT version so it does xt basically means it gets the turbo boxer engine in it and it really does perform real well uh, so this is cosmic blue pearl it does have a metallic flake to it but it's really hard to see um, i'm not sure that i really see much pearl um, <laughs> in it but that's what they call it cosmic blue pearl Let's go around to the back here. Have a powered lift gate, and you have about 32 or so cubic feet of space back here, maybe 35, um, a decent amount. Got a nice little cover back here, it says Outback. Um, what do we got underneath here? We have uh, just a kit no spare tire that I can see. Let me see if I hold this up. Um, anything underneath. And if we lift up that kit, we do have a spare tire under here and it looks like it might be a full size, but that's pretty cool. Do have some power, so that's good. You do have, oh, there's the latch for the seats. Didn't mean to do that, but there are your latches to drop your second row seats. I think with that second row down, then you get like something around 65 cubic feet, somewhere in that range. Uh, you'll, I'll have all those numbers in the full review. Okay, let's take a look at the back. This does have a full leather interior. Really nice brown color, kind of a chocolate color. This does have the heated seats in the rear also. Up front. Same thing, really nice seats, got powered seats with lumbar. You do have a thigh extender also, which is nice. It makes it really comfortable in here. Okay, here is the front in case you hadn't seen the inside of the new the Outback recently. But yeah, it looks really nice. It's pretty comfortable also. Okay, what do you guys think so far? We're going to head to the gas station and get this test started. I'll give you parameters about the test as we drive. I will also give you more information about the Subaru Outback. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But let's go to the gas station. Let's get this thing filled up and let's get the test started. Okay, we're at the gas station. Now, if you didn't know, Subaru's gas tanks are on the passenger side not the driver's side so this is the same pump i use it's just i had to use it from the other side so all right let's go ahead and get this filled up let's see if there's any restrictions any recommendations just says unleaded fuel only it does not say anything about having to have premium i think that's different in the past i think in the past they may have required premium but now they do not Nice, got a little holder right up there. That's good. In case you were wondering, we've got 494 for 91, 414 for 89, and 424 for 87. Okay, here we go. We got 87. Okay, we are up and going. Okay, there we go, 5.6 gallons is what we actually put in so far. So let's get everything buttoned up here. We are tight, all right. So let's get everything reset and we'll get started. 
so we're going to be looking here at this gauge right here. So at the top, as trip A with your miles per gallon and how many miles to uh, empty. And then down here is the odometer, and that's going to carry our miles of how many we drove. So we're going to reset those right now. Reset. Okay. They are both reset, so we are ready to go. We're going to head to our first town, and on the way, I'm going to give you parameters of the test that we're running today, and then I will give you an update as we enter town. The way we run this test is pretty simple. We're going to drive 100 miles. We're going to drive 50 miles in one direction. We're going to turn around, and we're going to drive 50 miles in the exact opposite direction. During the first 50 miles and the second 50 miles, we're going to drive through two towns. It'll be the same two towns both times. In those two towns, we will drive a loop through the town. So we hit stop light, stop signs, some traffic, some real world type driving. Then we're going to get up on the interstate. We'll drive about 10 to 12 miles on the interstate, turn around, and then that should be about our 50 mile marker. And when we turn around, then we'll come back and we'll do everything in reverse order. A few things that we're going to have set up on the car. First off, we drive in normal mode. We don't put it in eco mode. We don't put it in sport mode. We won't want to minimize or maximize the mile per gallon. We want to give you what you would get just getting in the car and driving every day, which is what most people will do. The next thing we're going to do is the temperature inside the car will be set between 68 and 72. Right now I have it set on 70 and that seems to be pretty comfortable. I also have ventilated seats. So I have the ventilated seats on low right now. The last thing we do is drive five miles per hour over the speed limit because that is the average of speed that people drive is about five miles per hour over. So we'll be at 60 on the highway, 75 on the interstate and between 35 and 50 in town. So that's pretty much the basics of the test. We run this test on every single vehicle we do. So if you enjoy this, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, just sit back, enjoy, and see whether the EPA is right, whether the car is right, because at the end of this test, we're gonna pull out a calculator and we're gonna go old school and see where the numbers actually fall for your real world mile per gallon. All right, we're entering town, so I'm gonna update you where we're at all right we are in town right now and we are at 30 miles per gallon and we've driven 4.8 miles so far we're above the highway mileage which is supposed to be 29 so that is perfectly reasonable and this thing has an eye tracker and it does not like it when you block the eye tracker which is right here <laughs> so all right, guys, so we're going to make a loop through this town, and then I will update you again as we get back out onto the highway. We're back out on the highway after making that loop through town. And so far, we are at 28.8 miles per gallon, so just under the highway average, and 8.9 miles total. So um, we are going to be heading to our next town and on the way I'm going to give you more information about the new 2025 Subaru Outback. This is my first Subaru that I have gotten to review so thank you Subaru for sending me this Outback. It's been very easy and comfortable to drive. The CVT in here works really well. It's not loud. Um, it doesn't make a bunch of noise. Uh, it's really, really smooth. Acceleration is really good, especially with this 2.4 liter turbo boxer engine. Um, it's great. It's tuned really well. The seats so far are feeling pretty comfortable. We'll see how that goes throughout the day because this is going to be about a two hour drive, a little over two hours. And um, so far, I enjoy it. I like this dark uh, chocolate interior with the black. It looks really nice. The screen uh, is built into the dash, which I really love. That is my one of my favorite things is when they integrate it into the dash. 
the screen has all of your buttons that you need, your climate control and um, all of your home buttons and thanks for the car, plus your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay is all on the screen together and the climate control buttons are always there and you don't have to dig for them. The car buttons are always there, you don't have to dig for those either. The only thing you have to worry about is Android Auto and you can maneuver that around also. Not a big deal, you have a vol separate volume control and you have buttons for your temperature. So you don't have digital buttons there, you do have actual buttons for that and for your defrosters. So that's really nice. Other than that, it's great in here. I like the regular shifter right here, cup holders right here. So far they have not been in the way, which is good. Uh, this one does come with the sunroof, um, which I opened earlier, and I can't really tell whether it's better to have it open or to have it shut <laughs> for the video, but I'm going to leave it shut for now. Um, air conditioning and everything works really well in here. Uh, it's up to 80 degrees outside now. Uh, it's about set on 70 inside the car, which is, and it feels really good. Ventilated seats are working really well also. Steering wheel, I, I do like the way that this is all set up. It, it feels good. It feels, you know, sturdy and everything like that. Um, driver assistance in this one does have the Subaru's EyeSight and this does have lane centering and um, lane change, easy lane change it says. If you're a Subaru person, you're gonna love this car. If you have driven a Subaru Outback before, you have an older one, this 25 is really nice. Um, I am impressed by it and you know, I haven't been impressed by too many wagons. Um, I don't want to say station wagon because Subaru doesn't like the word station wagon, but I'll call this a wagon um, or a long crossover, <laughs> however you want to look at it, but it is great. It has a great amount of space back there, and the only other wagon that I have been in that I thoroughly enjoyed was the Volvo V60 Cross Country, but that is a considerable different price point <laughs> than this Subaru. Just like every Subaru, this is all-wheel drive, and it does have the X mode attached to it. it. Has about eight and a half, a little over eight and a half inches of ground clearance, so you can take this so to some mild off-roading um, you might even it might even do well in some heavier off-roading uh, if you want a little bit more ground clearance you're going to be wanting the wilderness that has um, nine and a half inches of ground clearance which is really good this is the xt version of the touring so this is the top of the line so this has every option that you can get there's probably a small little option you probably could add on if you wanted to um, but it basically gets all of the main options on this car. And the XT part of it basically means that you get the 2.4 liter uh, boxer engine in here, which is has considerably more power than the standard engine. Now, I was going to go over our pricing on this, and I was like, usually I will give kind of pricing over most of the trims, but this technically has nine trims <laughs> nine trims um, you have the base the premium the onyx the limited and the touring the onyx the limited and the touring all have xt versions also of those plus you have the wilderness so i'm just going to give you the base number the wilderness number and then what this one is so the outback base model is gonna start out at $28,895. So under $30,000, you can have an all-wheel drive Outback that will basically do what, everything that you need it to do. Um, and then if you go up to the Wilderness, so you want some more features, you want a little more ground clearance, you wanna be able to do a little more off-road, um, and that's going to start you out at $39,960. Now, the XT, which is the, what this one is, it starts out at $42,795. But this one, with its destination fee and a 
Uh, just a small little option is added on. I believe it's the all weather floor mats. This one, as tested, it comes in at $44,376. And that beeping is the eye tracker telling me to watch the road, which I'm perfectly fine. I can see what's going on and I can still talk to you and I can see everything that's going on. <laughs> but that's the eye tracker. Not a big fan of eye trackers but some of the systems have to have the eye tracker involved, but just for safety. Anyway, we're getting ready to come into our next town, so it's time for me to give you an update. We're entering our second town now, so let's take a look at where we're at. We have got 34.1 miles per gallon, so it is crushing it right now, and 28.9 miles. We're gonna make a loop through this town, so I will update you guys after we make the loop and before we get up onto the interstate. We made our loop through town and we are getting ready to get up onto the interstate. So far we've got 32.3 miles per gallon and at 36.2 miles. If you notice we are now, uh, our gas tank actually says we can go 500 miles. So that does adjust uh, depending on your miles per gallon. So you can see when we started out, it said like 300 or something because we kind of hadn't, this car had done a lot of idling uh, the last couple days. So the gas mileage wasn't that great, but now it's doing good. So we're up here, we're gonna accelerate. You guys can hear this a little bit. Oh yeah. This engine is really, really good. I am really impressed by it. It sounds good. The CVT was doing great. It mimics the shifts and it actually did really well. Whenever it did shift, it was like it made that fake shift and it kind of gave it a little more oomph when we took off. So that's pretty awesome. Let's take a look where we're at real quick and we are at 31.4 miles per gallon and 37.6 miles total. I will update you guys again in a minute whenever we get to our turnaround spot, It'll be about 10 miles from now. So I will see you then. Coming up on our exit right here, so far we are at 31.2 miles per gallon and right at 50.1 miles. So we're right at our 50 mile mark and that's where we're turning around. So that worked out perfectly. It's usually how it is. It's usually really close within a mile or so, um, one way or the other, whenever I turn around at this point. So um, we got that uh, lined out, this trip lined out for every single vehicle that we get in and we run the same test on every single one. All right. Generally, there's nobody up here and we can just go across and right back down, which that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, right back down the other side. There's no traffic coming. We'll go down. Here we go. And then we will, uh, accelerate again you guys can hear it again I mean it is pretty quiet in here I'm sure that you probably can barely hear it uh, through the microphone but we'll try it anyway so here we go three two one yep and we are up to speed <laughs> it is very quick this engine is awesome this boxer engine is great okay so we're back on the interstate now and 30.5 miles per gallon, 51.4 miles total. All right, we are going to uh, take this for about 10 to 12 miles and then we're gonna get off the interstate and go back through town. So once I get to that point, I will update you. Coming up on our exit and so far we are at 29.7 miles per gallon and 64.1 miles total. We're gonna get her off right here and 
we are going back into town we will make a loop through this town up here uh, the same town we came out of earlier and then i will update you again where we're at after the loop as we head back out onto the highway we're back out onto the highway now after making that loop through town and so far we are at 28.4 miles per gallon and 75.2 miles we are heading to the next town and right now we are just a little under the highway but we are you know three and a half miles per gallon over the uh, epa average so i think we're doing really well i think we're going to settle in probably right around 27 and a half to 28 uh, which would be awesome so i will update you when we get to our next town we have entered town and right now we are at 29.7 miles per gallon 95.3 miles so we might actually go a little over 100 miles today according to this car we drive the same route every single time but some cars are a little bit different and register things a little bit different so we are uh gonna come through town we're gonna make a loop through this town and then i will update you again on our way back to the gas station we are back out on the highway headed back to the gas station so right now we are at 29.4 miles per gallon 99.1 miles so yeah we're going to come in at around probably 103 uh, 104 on our miles but that's okay every car registers it a little bit different i will update you when we get to the gas station and give you final numbers we are back at the gas station and it looks like we can get the same pump that we started with so that is what we will do final numbers according to the car 29.6 miles per gallon and 102.8 miles now let's get filled up and let's do the calculations and see how accurate the car is all right we are back and wow i am way away from the pump look at this <laughs> i am way away from the pump wow okay same thing as earlier there's no recommendations for gas on this other than unleaded so that's what we're going to be doing we're putting 87 octane in all right here we go get in there get it started welcome to and we're going door. there's our final numbers 3.381 gallons that's what we're going to be going with let's get in and let's do some calculations see how close the car was we had 102.8 for our miles and we're going to divide that by our gallons which was 3.38 3, .38. 3 0.38 equals we got 30.41 30.41 if you guys can see that so 30.4 is what we're going to go with so just about a mile per gallon above what the car is registering so that's a plus so you're going getting better than what the car actually says the 2025 subaru outback touring xt real world mile per gallon is 30.4 if you enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up button so it can spread out and other people can also enjoy the video then click on one of the videos that's on the screen one is the review of this outback and the other one youtube chose for you i think you're going to like them both you guys have a blessed day and i will see you in that next video